Hi, my name is Michael Jurdy, and this is my speech on flexagons. Now, what is a flexagon? It is defined by Webster's Dictionary as a paper so folded that when exposed in several ways, it creates a variety of views. So, in other words, a geometric figure folded with origami that when you fold it in certain ways it will reveal other sides. So as you can see right now there is a green side showing and a blue side showing. There was also a red at the beginning. Where did the red go? Well it's actually inside. There's three sides to this flexagon. In fact, there are six, but I'll go into that later. There are three basic sides to this, and those are green, blue, and red. Whenever you flip it, you'll see that a side comes out and the other side goes away. So in this case, the blue disappeared. But if I fold it again, we have the blue again, and we have the red, but no green. Now, how does one find out about these things? Well, originally, it was all an accident. Believe it or not, such a, a thing as amazing as this was discovered by accident. It was discovered by a man named Arthur Stone. He was a British student at Princeton University. And during his time at Princeton, he had gotten new American paper one year, but he had an English binder, being from British background. So unfortunately, the American paper was slightly too large, and so it had to be cut down. So he cut it down, leaving several little strips. So while in geometry class, he decided to figure out how he could mess around with this. He folded some origami shapes and very symmetrical, uh, geometrical shapes. And one of these was a hexagon made of various triangles. What he had actually made was the trihexaflexagon. So when he finished folding and was experimenting around, like figuring out that you can fold this whole thing into triangles, he had accidentally opened it up. And he thought that was the strangest thing ever that it just started opening up. And he tried it many times and it still kept opening up on him. So what he did next was he brought it up to his friends. His three other friends that he wanted to show, to show this with, which were Richard Feynman, Bryant Tuckerman, and John Tukey. You probably know Richard Feynman, but the other two probably not. Their small group was eventually joined by Tuckerman's father, and the five of them went to work on discovering all of the mysteries of the flexagon. During the discovering, they worked with both the trihexaflexagon and they also worked with the hexahexaflexagon, which is the same thing but with six sides instead. So what all did they figure out? They figured out some amazing things. They figured out the Tuckerman Traverse, which is simply a diagram showing all the different states that the flexagon can be in. Unfortunately, after finishing up this discovery, all of the information on a flexagon was lost. And so it was forgotten and forgotten to history. 
but eventually was rediscovered by a man named Martin Gardner. Martin Gardner, a recreational mathematician, had posted a, an article in a column called Math Games, and it was about the hexaflexagon. And as soon as he published it, flexagons went widespread again and became a very household known thing. And I plan to continue that. There are many more that were created afterwards. After rediscovering flexagons, you ended up finding out that you could make a huge amount of others. For example, there's also, as I said, the hexahexaflexagon, which is a six-sided version. This is actually a hexahexaflexagon. It has more than just the basic sides. For example, you have this side. There's also, let's see, there's also... There's also this side. And there's like a black and orange one as well. It is an amazing thing. Plus, there's many others out there, such as the Dodeca flexagon. There's also a Tetra flexagon. And of course, my favorite, the Hexaflexa Mexagon. I hope that this speech has been very enjoyable and I would like to thank you for watching. This concludes my speech.